Yes, eco disc hacking time. What shall I hack today? I know. What about an eco disc? Well, obviously, since it's eco disc hacking time, what bits of eco disc do I have? Bam! The power supply board for the lift car. What else have I got? This speaker. Now I've actually got loads of parts. This is a very small selection. I've got loads of parts because every time I see a lift engine, I always ask him for parts. I've almost got every board for an eco disc, but sadly, I don't have the board I really need, which is the power supply for the cabinet and because of that I can't actually power on the most important board and the most important board is wait a minute got to de static myself before I touch it and let's take a look at the most important eco disc board there is <gasps> the logic board so let's take a look at its logic board this is a fourth generation the newest version and there's been a few changes okay that's the processor i've looked up all of the chip numbers on this board we've actually done a lot of research and not just me all of the team have including many people from germany and we've done a lot of research into this and we're getting very close to re completely reverse engineering this board this main chip is a processor it's not particularly fast and it doesn't have any onboard ram or a storage or anything at all let's just turn on the light so that's just your bogs down processor. Then here you've got the BIOS, or the ROM chip basically. Then you've got two chips of flash memory called NVRAM, which are there. And there's many, many other chips. Most of the other ones are to do with inputs. Let's look at what bits we've got. We've got these two switches. Now you'll probably recognise these from the repeater board. You've got inhibit doors opening, so you make your lift go up and down, up and down as you enter calls and never open its doors. And the other one stops you from calling lift when you're working on it. One switch is missing is the serial mode switch, even though we've got a serial port. Now a serial port is actually quite an interesting thing of this because it's security by obscurity the best sort of security there is to stop any old idiot messing with the serial port guess what they've done they flipped the pins around how stupid is that all you need to do is get a custom serial connector with the pin switched and you can actually use it over oh, there you've got battery that's just for the clock and you've got quite a few other bits here and you've got uh, all your main buttons you've got your menu button the up button down button okay button and you've got your call buttons there then also addition on this board you've got this little button which i actually don't know what that little button does you don't get that one on the repeater board you have a connector so that's the main problem i have now this is where we need help since the video is titled help with hacking an eco disc with all this knowledge we've got this board we still don't know the most basic thing what voltage it is and how you power supply i believe that one there is the power supply I think. But since we don't have the power supply board, I'm still asking lift engineers, eventually I'm going to get it. Soon I'm going to be able to build an entire ego disc. I've got everything. All I need really is the VF drive, obviously the power supply board, and the motor. And then I have an entire ego disc. So this is how to build your own ego disc. So let's just go through how far we've got with reverse engineering this board. There's quite a few interesting bits, like it's actually SD card reader. Now it actually has an SD card in. If you take SD card out, it makes the lift not work. We've got the raw data off the SD card from a working ego disc. We've Got quite a long way now. Interesting thing, why are these chips called NVRAM chips? When obviously it is flash memory, they store the values. The term NVRAM is non volatile RAM, so it's RAM that keeps its data when the device is powered off. In other words, flash memory. But NVRAM is a really old term. The term NVRAM was used when you had a RAM chip with a battery connected to it to keep its data. Well, why are these modern flash chips called NVRAM? Obviously, there's a precise meaning why I'd call it that rather than just flash memory, but we don't actually know this. The serial port just just writes data to your NVRAM chips and ROM chip. That's all it does. It doesn't do anything else. You can actually control the lift either through writing settings manually or through changing the settings for the menu button. And after a lot of painstaking effort, we now know all of the menus to the eco disk apart from the most common model of VF drive, which we don't know settings to that. But other than that, we know all of the settings. After a lot, a lot of research, and it wasn't easy to find out. And there's a lot of menus. They're all coded. Now, this might seem complicated, but in comparison to the Otis Gen 2 or the Schindler 3300 is actually a lot easier and it's really nicely designed as you can really feel when you mess around and it's definitely a real-time operating system which is just really nice to use compared with Gentle and other ones which feel like it's an operating system which the program then runs on top of which makes it really laggy and horrible I mean this board's actually nice it works a lift nicely it's nicer than its rivals it's probably the best logic out there apart from Mitsubishi because of course Mitsubishi is always best so with these NVRAM chips pretty much just saves all of your settings. They're numbered settings, so it'd be like menu 1, option 5, setting 10. That's how all the settings are stored. But there's menu 4, read-only settings. You can only alter menu 4 directly through the serial port. You can't alter menu 4 settings from pressing the buttons. And there's the most important setting on the eco disk. 
the right piss take setting. And as much as I prefer real lift companies over generic shit, when a real company does something wrong, I have to call them out over this. And, it, and Cone's just done something completely disgusting here. It's the setting of how many trips the e disc have done. When it's over 10,000, the menus are locked. So you cannot do anything to the menus through the buttons. You can only use the serial port. And they've made the serial port as secure as possible to stop other companies stealing Cone's maintenance contract. So every time you've done 10,000 trips, you have to go back to Cone to get them to unlock your e disc again. Which is fantastic. That's just bad practice. That's just not nice behaviour from Kona. They've done that. Well, we know what menu option is, even though we can't change it. So now we know what to do. What we've got to do is find that option in the NV RAM. Other than all powering up the board, which we don't actually know how to do, which is really embarrassing because that's like the most basic bit. The other thing we don't know how to do is how we actually alter the settings on these chips through the serial port. It has to be... Just the bog standard protocol, I think. Now, there's no encryption on this board at all. There is a lot of security by obscurity, so they've probably done something a bit obscure, possibly, or maybe not. Maybe I just think the pin switch around on the serial port is enough to keep it secure. I honestly don't know. But my question to everyone watching that's got any knowledge in this sort of field is what protocol would be used from the serial port to write to these chips? That's what we need to find out. Once you've done that, it'll be fairly easy. Because once you've done that, all we'd need to do is go to a working issue disk, do a read of the chips, make it do a couple of chips, read it again, see what value's changed. We will already know which value it is at, on the menus that says how many trips it's done. So we'll see how many trips it's done. We'll convert that into binary and then look for that change. And then we'll see exactly whereabouts on the chip that particular value is stored. And once you've done that, we'll be able to unlock the eco. This has gone over 10,000 trips. When an eco goes over 10,000 trips, building owner has two options. Go back to cone. Yes, and pay for however much money Cone wants to charge, completely at the mercy of Cone then. Or the other option is someone else has also hacked EcoDisc, and they've made a tool for it. But actually, it's a couple of tools. It's one tool that does like loads of different boards or from different lift companies, and guess how much it costs? Thousands of pounds. So we're going to undercut them. We're going to make it for like £50. Pounds. Or even less. No, actually, no, I might do it is do it for free. Undercut that annoying company who's charging people money for our hacking tools. Because we're going to hack it and just give it out to the world for free if we manage to hack it, which we hope we are. A few other things to note. This, uh, on this board, which is the 2014 onwards board, notice a lot of chips still say 1996. Cone programmed this really well. They made it in 1996. And they haven't really updated this design much until I update it in about 2003 for a second generation eco disc, just a few upgrades. Then in 2014, I made a couple of upgrades. So 2014 upgrades, it's mainly these chips are now surface mount chips. Rather than having these NVRAM chips being chips you can pull out, they're then surface mount. And the reason for that is obviously surface mounts are modern day technology. Alternatively, the real reason to stop those pesky engineers pulling the chips out and changing the value using a chip reader? Hmm, can't be that, can it? So Kona are being a bit trying to steal maintenance contracts here. Sadly, eco discs are being replaced with generics. And from speaking to a lot of different engineers, the reason for this isn't to say they don't work. It's because building owners don't want to pay out for Cone unlocking their boards again. So they've replaced the entire lift. Alternatively, generic companies have persuaded them to replace the entire lift. Since generic lift companies always like to get as much trade as possible. So if you know anything about how you write these sort of chips, let's get the name of the chip on camera. If any of you know how to write to these sort of chips through the serial port, bearing in mind they're doing a lot of security by obscurity and not actually by encryption, what protocol is used? And also, if you know what voltage this takes, please tell me. And then it'll be EcoDisc hacking time.